ask God to help you in this area, it's going to keep growing to where you grow a monster. And this is where many people fail to realize to come to the place of repentance. As long as they are not caught, they'll keep covering up things. Have you ever realized that the more you keep doing dirt, you just keep putting more dirt, but all you're doing is making more of a lump on the carpet to be seen. Sooner or later, whatever's in the dark gonna come to the light. Nothing stays hidden forever. I want you to know, nothing, there's nothing hidden under the sun that God does not know about. Sooner or later, God is just trying to get you to the place to where you come to the place of repentance and after you repent with God, then all of a sudden you're going to be made right. I mean, you're going to be in that right place with God and things even with people. You know, there's some things that, you know, you've done some people and you're godly sorry for, I mean, that you probably ain't even sorry for, but God will say, once you're going to get, get, in to get it straight with me, you're going to be able to give it, I mean, forgive these other people that you're wrong. But the Bible says, now check this out. Here it is now, David, it's all of a sudden, he, he sleeps with a woman and once he realized that he made a mistake, he sends a message to Joab and he said, now tell Joab to send Uriah off the battlefield. I'm going to paraphrase. I got to go. I don't have time. But the Bible says now Uriah gets off the battlefield and David begins to ask him how the war was going. And he says the war be going well, but you know what? I really need to be back in the battle. Here it is, a committed man. Have you ever met a person that was committed to God, but yet there are some people that have seen and all of a sudden trying to mess up other people. Here it is. In other words, I want you to understand, David is trying to cover up his mess. Have you ever tried to keep covering up your mess but never came to the place of cleanness? God says it's time that you come clean, but people like to stay away nasty. You know what? Whenever there's sin, we like to stay in the dark and keep hiding our mess. But you know what? God is shining the light in this last hour. There's such a shaking going on that anything can will, I mean, that can be shaken will be shaken. There's a shaking going on in our earth realm. There's a shaking going on in our nations that God is shaking things. And the thing that he's wise, he's shaking it. He's trying to bring us to the place of repentance. He's trying to bring us to a place to where we're godly sorry. And in other words, he said, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and he said, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. But you know what? We, 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 with our egoness, it's like if we don't need God. But I want you to know, everybody needs God. I don't care who you are, where you're positioned. The rich man needs God. The poor man need God. Even the in-between man needs God. Everybody needs God. We cannot acknowledge, I mean, we cannot ignore the fact that we don't need him. You need him. And the Bible says, now here it is, after David made a mess of things, here it is, he sleeps with a woman. As I said, number one, he was supposed to be at war, but yet he chose to stay home. And when he stayed home, this is the consequences for him staying home. Have you ever noticed that when you stay away from the things of God, you always find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time? Have you ever noticed when you stay away from prayer, from the word, from the ministry, you find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time? Have you ever found yourself just because you got overboard with your work, you got indulged in your work more than you did with God? Come on, I ain't saying nothing wrong with work, but you know what? We got to give God a time too. I ain't saying nothing wrong with you going out and making a dollar. That's great. But you got to also remember that you got to give God time too. And that's the reason why you're in a place now to where you need to come to a place of repentance and find Find yourself getting in church again, getting in that place again to where you can get in the fellowship of God and get among the fellowship of the believers so that you can be strengthened in your walk with God. But the Bible says when David chooses to stay away, here it is now he sees this woman, he sleeps with this woman, he sends her to home as if nothing went on and it, it was all lexical David. But I'm going to tell you, whatever is done in the dark, it comes to the light and all of a sudden when the news got back that the woman is pregnant, David begins to work up a conspiracy. Have you ever noticed that people that do wrong just keep trying to cover up their dirt because they're trying to cover up their tracks for the wrong that they've done. But let me tell you, one thing about a person that keeps covering up his dirt, he's going to overplay his hand every time. If you keep over covering up dirt, you overplay your hand every time. The Bible even says about Satan. Satan overplayed his hand with Jesus. When he met Jesus in the wilderness and he tried to tempt Jesus, he couldn't do it. But yet and still, he said after that season, he departed for that season and he met Jesus at Calvary. And that's when he overplayed his hand for the last time. So it is when anybody that doesn't come to the place of repentance, you will overplay 
play your hand. You will live a life of misery, a life of sorrow, a life of, I mean, a greed because you want to know why you're mad because you choose not to repent. But if you break that barrier and say, God, I got to repent. I got to ask your forgiveness. And once I ask your forgiveness, I want to also ask that you forgive me for the people I wrong. And you might even have to go to some of them and ask their forgiveness. Hello. I know you don't want to hear that, but I had to say it. But God wants you to do that because you got to live a life of pureness. You got to live a life of right standings with God. And I know somebody may have done you some stuff that you feel that you ain't got to repent to. But I'm telling you, if you just forgive them because hurting people like to hurt other people, that's why they live a life of not. I mean, uh, a life of unrepentantness because hurting people like to keep hurting people because they've been hurting life. And when they've been hurting life, all of a sudden now they live this life of defense like everybody's out to get them. It isn't that everybody's out to get you. It's the fact that God is trying to bring you to a place to where you need to repent. God was trying to break some things in David's life. God was trying to shape David's life because there were some character issues in David's life that he could, did not deal with. And these are things that not only haunted his life, but haunted his generational life. And what was that generational sin that haunted his life? David had a woman problem. Believe it or not, that's why he had all the wives. He had woman problems. He kept wanting one woman after another woman, and that's what led to his downfall because he never got that, uh, that issue resolved. But I'm going to share something about his life that is so very interesting, that is so impacting. The Bible says now after he covered it up and he tried to play it off and after he sent this man, this man comes in, he gives him meat. He thinking the man going to go home. He say, wash your feet, go home, meet your wife. Uriah didn't stay. He stays at the palace and he sleeps at the palace. And David said, this rascal didn't go home. So David said, I tell you what, the next time he said, okay, if I can't get him to get eat him, get him full with food, I'm going to get him full with liquor. David began to get the man so drunk, intoxicated, and thinking that once a man get intoxicated, he going to go home and make it look like he, he, he the one really conceived and had the child with the woman. But the Bible says after he got so enticed, with liquor, with the, with the wine, that he did not go home, he still laid at the palace of the gate. So David realized that he couldn't get this, this thing resolved, that he couldn't get this man to move forward to try to cover up his mess. And how many of you, you're trying to get somebody to cover up for what you've done, but yet you and somebody even went to jail because of what you choose not to confess? Hello? I know you didn't want to hear that, but there's some people right now are in prison because there were some things that you knew you did, but you choose not to confess about it. But I'm telling you right now, we're in a time that we got to come to the place where we need to repent and get on, get in right standards with God, where we need to get our heart right. We need to get our mind right, where we need to get a reformation in the mind, get our uh, changing of thinking so that we can get a new perspective in life. Come on, because there are people that are watching us and we got to live a life that is repentant before God. And the Bible says after David did all this dirt and all of a sudden his last attempt, he said, if I can't get him through food and if I can't get him through alcohol, I'm just going to give him his own death notice. So the Bible says David wrote out a letter to Joab. And as he wrote the letter out, check this out. He signed it and sealed it and he gives it to the man that was taking his own death sentence to die in the battle. And what did the letter say? When Joab read the letter, the letter stated that when you get to a fight, he said, I want you to let the battle get it's so intense, put Uriah in front and y'all withdraw and tarry back so that he could die. And just as he put it in the letter, Joab being a man of under authority, obeyed the king's command. The minute the fight got intense, the Bible says that the battle got so intense. Now check this out, that Uriah was put on the front line. And the minute he was put on the front line, Uriah died. Now check this out. What's so amazing after he dies, all of a sudden the Bible says David begins, he calls for his wife Bathsheba. Giving a woman no time to grieve. She finds out her husband dead. All of a sudden, David brings her in. But the Bible says, what's so interesting about God? Nothing is under the sun that is hidden. The Bible says, after David gets so excited, the Bible says that Nathan the prophet decides to visit him. It's something about a prophet. Whenever a prophet shows up in your house, it's either something is it's judgment or it could be good news. But the Bible says when the prophet shows up to David's house, he just shows up unexpectedly, unaware, and he just begins to say, hey, David, how you doing? David said, I'm doing fine, man. Everything lovely. I got another wife added to the fold. Everything's great. And all of a sudden he begins to say, hey, I, 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 I need to tell you a story. And he said, well, say on. He said, I want to tell you about a story that about a rich man and a poor man. He began to tell him a story, he said the, the rich man had a bunch of sheep. 
And there was this poor man that had one sheep, but he loved it so much that all of a sudden with his, this one sheep that he treated as part of the family. And he said, why he treated him as part of the family? But yet when this rich man had a fellow that came in for a far country, he invited him into dinner. Instead of he killing his own sheep, he went and took this man only sheep and killed it. And David says, that man shall be killed. And all of a sudden, Nathan said, you are the man. And all of a sudden, the spirit of prophecy, apostolic, began to rise up on Nathan. He said, in other words, God told me to tell you, he gave you everything. He said, anything you wanted, God said, I would have given it to you. But all of a sudden, here it is, you took another man's wife and you killed a man just for his wife. And he said, in other words, he began to pronounce judgment on him. He said, because you have not come to the place of repentance, God said that the sword will not leave your house. In other words, but David, after he realized his mistake, see, all these things could have avoided, beloved, if David just would have come to the place of repentance. There's some things you have gone through right now. And the reason why you're going through those things, I'm going to touch some things, is because you choose not to repent. But today is a day, a day of change, a day of reformation, a day of recomposure, where God is trying to get you to change your mind, change your heart. And once you make that U-turn, your life is fixing to be better. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God. The Bible says that David, once he got to that place, check this out. All of a sudden, when all of a sudden he gave him, he said, the child is going to die. David takes the child and show if his, if his word. David begins to pray, didn't eat, didn't sleep, went on the consecration, the child died. But what I love about David, David come to the place of repentance. After it took that to bring repentance. There's some things right now that you're coming through that God is trying to bring you to the place of repentance if you just come to that place. I want to pray today that you just come to that place of repentance and get in a place with God so that God can be the difference in your, the different maker in your life. Just to go with this prayer with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, here I am. God, forgive me. I repent for the things I've done to people and even to myself. I repent, God, even as I've done some things to you that I'm godly sorry. I want to start my life fresh, start it over, make all things new. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you for the turnaround. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank God. Hey Amen. I pray that you were blessed with that message. I pray it was as impacting as it was for me. There's some more information I'm going to be sharing with you in a few more minutes. I'll be right back after these messages. God bless you. Destiny Calls is brought to you by Cornerstone International Ministries, Pastor Sylvester and Ursula Murphy. Welcome back to the Destiny Calls, amen. I pray that you were blessed with that message, amen. I know it was a little rough to deal with, but that's some things right now. That's why I had to hit that and say that, but I know change has come to your life. Your life is better. Hey, if you're ever in a location near the Ville Platte or Opelousas location at any of our locations, we'd love to have you a part of our family to be a part of something that is impacting, something that is so I mean, profound. We would like to have you a part of that uh, services that we offer to you. And man, if you're ever in the Bill Platt locations, you can be with us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Also on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. at 1546 Division Road. Love to have you also in our Bill Opelousas location at 2363 West Landry, temporarily now, but yet we're getting ready to make a change. And we love to have you there with us as well every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and also every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We would love to greet you, love upon you, and just unpack you, let you know that God loves you and we love you too. But we want you to know that you can check out our websites and check out more upcoming events. We want to let you know that Jesus is the reason for the season and your destiny is calling you. This has truly been a blessing to be a part, amen, to just come to you every morning to just impact your life with the word of God. Hey, but I got to go now. But before I go, hey, if you're ever thinking about considering sowing a seed towards this work, towards this ministry, we would love you to do so. Amen. We want you to know that God is doing some great things. If you sow into good soil, I want you to know that this is good soil that you can sow into. And when you sow into it, you're going to see a return come back unto you. I love you and we thank God for you. We want you to know that as I go, your destiny is calling you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Destiny Calls is brought to you by Cornerstone International Ministries, Pastor Sylvester and Ursula Murphy.